Hey guys, what's up? Gray here, and welcome back to Pi Game. Today we'll be continuing to create the top-down racing game that I originally created in Mono Game. Today I will be showing you how to load a sprite into Pi Game, then render it onto the screen. In the last episode, I showed how to set up Pi Game with Pi Charm. If you missed that, then go check that out here. But today I will be showing you how to load a sprite into Pi Game and then render it onto the screen. To get caught up, I will first go over what we have so far, and then we will add on to it as we go. First thing we're going to want to do is also import system. This will have a lot of important use for us in the upcoming future, so we might as well just import it now. Another library that you can think about using is uh, from math import star. This imports all of the math functions into your Python project. Um, obviously, it's grayed out right now because we're not using it. So basically, this area here is for functions. So we can define a render function, and we can define the update function. This isn't really going to do anything for us just yet, so I'll just comment them out for now. After we initialize Pi game here, this is where we can set up all of our variables. Here I'm just going to set a background color for our screen. So background color, and we set it as a tuple of three integers. Uh, and then we'll do 120, they go to 255, it's the color RGB codes. And then we can do a screen width, oh, width equals 1280 and screen height equals 1080. Perfect. Now we can also do screen dimensions. So screen dimensions is equal to screen width, screen height. And this will basically just make a tuple of the tuple and uh, basically just set it up so we can get rid of this. And do screen dimension. Perfect. So this basically just creates the screen object here by using Pygame's functionality of set mode. And then after this, uh, I'm going to show you another important thing that you can use. Um, which is FPS and a clock. So we'll set the FPS to 60. I can spell FPS. And then we just create a clock, which is equal to pygame.time.clock. Perfect. And this will basically just uh, create time in our game, give it FPS, and um, make it flow a little bit better. So if you have like moving stuff, uh, it might move too slow if you're just doing it by pixels, but if you set frames per second, you can make it go faster and it'll be a lot smoother. So here, let's run this and see what happens. Basically, it's just uh, this. We haven't changed the background color, so let's do that as well. Background color. Run, oh. All right, there we go. So now let's change the background color. And um, I'm just going to ignore this for right now. We can go into the game loop. So let's change this up a bit. Instead of having run equals true and running equals false, we'll just have while one. So while true. So while running, basically. It's the same thing. And we'll have for event in pi game dot event dot get event.type equals pygame.quit then we'll do system.exit so basically if you hit the x at the top right of the application it'll close it'll exit and then what we can do here is say if the event.type is equal to pygame dot key down and then we'll do player dot key underscore down event key and we can also do um, if event dot type equals pi game dot key up player dot key up event dot 
So uh, right now this isn't working, but it will work in just a second once we make the player class. We are almost there. Here is where we will update our game. And then uh, we'll begin rendering here. Oh, let me get a comment. Rendering. Uh, so here we can do the screen.fill and the pygame. Uh, we're not going to update the display. We're just going to do pygame.display.flip. And then we'll do clock.tick. And we'll say FPS. Because it'll just tick at the uh, rate of that. And then last thing we have to do is pygame.quit. All right. And it wants an extra line for whatever reason. All right, now we'll want to create the player class. You're going to right click on your project folder and create a new Python file. And you can name it player. And it'll just be a player.py right here. So this is basically a fresh file. We can uh, import these if we'd like, just to have them here. And um, we're basically just going to create a class. And this will be a blueprint for a player. Um, so we can create the object of the player in our main.py. All we need to do to create a class is say class player. And then we're going to want to make the constructor. So uh, let's create that. We'll say define underscore underscore init and self. Self just means it's talking about itself, the player. It's um, like this. If you say in other languages, this dot it would be self is the player. So let's create a uh, variable. We'll say self dot direction and we'll give it a direction, which is none for now. Uh, basically, if you were to change this to like player, if I can type, you can create player dot direction. So then whenever there, what happened? Whenever a, uh, Instead of saying self.direction, you could just say player.direction, so then maybe you know what you're talking about a little bit more uh, for your own code, but I'm going to keep it as self. Self.direction. And we'll create a self.x equals 50 and self.y. Why did I put a space? It was 50. All right, so here's where uh, some physics come in. You can basically do whatever you want. Um, I'm not going to add all of these right now, but I'm just showing you what all you could do with it. So you could have velocity, you can have um, acceleration. We can have uh, self dot top speed, self dot um, rotation, and self dot uh, turn rate. So if we're creating a top down racing game, all of these would come in handy. These are important things. Instead of just velocity, maybe we could say linear velocity, um, different stuff. There's more that we could add to this, but this is very basic to give you an idea of something that you could base it off of. So self.car equals pygame.image.load. So this is basically where we're going to load our image. And I always create a resource folder. And then put it in there. So we'll just call it car.png. This is basically just storing the image in yourself.car variable. So after you do this, I'd highly advise to do convert. And you can also do convert alpha. So if you have a transparent picture, it'll actually be transparent. This adds the alpha channel onto the RGB. So that should work out nicely for you. And then we'll do self.rect equals self dot car dot get rect and then we want to give it different faces so uh, to figure out what way it's facing basically so self dot up equals false self dot down equals false self dot left equals false and self dot right equals false Perfect. Okay, so now that we have those, so now that we have those, we'll also want an update method to update our player. 
So if we just go back right here, we can say define update and self. Oh, typed it twice for me. And uh, here we can just update whatever we want with the player. This would be like movement or uh, whatever the player is about to do. So movement code. We're going to want to define a render function. So there we go. Render here. I can't spell today. So this will render the player to render whatever we need. We can basically say if the player hits W, A, S, or D, it'll set their car to whatever side they're facing to. So if you hit W, it'll set uh, self.up to true. All right, let's start with the render function. In the render function, we're going to want to render the player to the screen. We basically just want to do a uh, screen dot blit. And we're going to want to pass in screen here. So um, let's do that here. Screen. Screen dot blit. And uh, we'll do, we need the car and we need the rectangle. So uh, self a car and self dot rect. Which means we are also going to want to put in the, uh, the X and the Y of the player. Okay, so that should be good there. We'll just uh, blit it to the screen, which basically just puts it onto the screen, literally. Um, and then we're going to want to define something new here. Define key down. I'm going to say self and key. So end key down, we're going to want to say if uh, key equals pi game dot underscore w um, then we'll do self dot up equals true and then if key equals pi game dot k underscore s self dot down equals true if key equals pi game oh and is your true there dot k underscore a let's say oh self why did i capitalize key all of a sudden okay self um dot left equals true and if key equals pi game dot k underscore d and self dot right equals true. That's basically that. So now we want to define key up. And we'll do self and key again. And in here, we'll want to do the same thing. So you can copy this. But set everything to false. So if the key is let up, then it won't happen anymore, basically. So it happens and then it stops happening. Let's head back to our main. So in main, we're going to want to import player. We do this the same way we do the math import. So we say uh, from player import player uh, but this one has to be capitalized because we're uh, importing the player dot pi from the player class now that we have imported that we can actually create the player here after the clock we'll do the uh the player code so we'll set up player and we will do player equals player and that basically just creates a new instance of your player. As you can see, these no longer have errors because uh, we've already filled in the code for this. So all of this should be working. Now we're just going to want to uh, complete these functions up here, the render and the update. Okay, right here where it says update game, we're going to want to do uh, update player, pass in the player. And up here, we're going to want to fill these out. Here we'll say define render uh, screen and player. 
and do pygame.draw.rect screen and we'll do um, 255, 255, 255, comma, 0, plus x, 0, plus y, 50, comma, 50. We're passing in the player, so we probably don't need to pass in x and y, we can just say, player dot x and player dot y. Next we'll say player dot render player dot x player dot y and screen. There we go and there's one more in the update and that is player dot update. Not update or update. Perfect. So then render, what we're gonna want to do is uh, screen and player. I did this wrong. This goes here. So we draw everything here in the render and then we update everything in the update. We also want to do the render function. So after screen up fill, we'll say render and uh, pass in screen and the player. So here I'm just going to do a basic um, movement. So we'll do self dot up. We'll say self dot y minus equals one. So if we hit W, we'll go up. We should at least. Let's try it out. Well, uh, we're making the square move, but not the car. As you can see here, I also added the down functionality. So now we can go up and down just one pixel if we hit uh, W or S. Now I'm going to want to do a really crucial code that if you saw I was moving around the rectangle, I want to set the rectangle as myself, which is basically the car, the, um, the PNG. So if I do self.rect.x equals self.x and self dot rect dot y equals self dot y. Now we can try it out. So now they're both, they're one and the same basically. So now we got it set up and we just, if we want, we just don't render that square. Um, but that's really the only other thing I'm rendering in the world. So if we can get them separate, then that would be Pretty good we can get the car moving around some other items and stuff maybe trees um, we'll see in the future but this is basically how you just load a texture on I kind of made it complicated because I want to show you how I'm gonna do the car code so in the next episode I will make the sprite move like a player and have rotation and um, more attributes and then hopefully next I'll add the camera in so if you did enjoy, please drop a like. I'll have more Pi Game content on the way. So check out my GitHub if you need the code and stick around for more content. Thank you all for watching and have a nice day.